when we moved back down to Southern California, it was I was 17 years old and I uh, started riding Speedway. You were good. I, I was racing when you were started too, and you were really good. I think they started you straight in like second division, and then you quickly went to first division after that. Is that, is that true? Well, what happened was about, I think 75 was my first year and I rode second division. I rode the last uh, four weeks of the season actually is all I rode. And uh, actually I won a, a couple of little second division championships or whatever they were called at the time. And uh, in the 70, 1976, Bruce Flanders and Steve Evans, who ran Irwindale Speedway at the time. This Steve Evans was involved with the, um... I think Irwindale Raceway, I believe, and um, yeah, it, it's, it was a long time ago. Crawfish, red rice and beans, hush puppies. Half the fun of this race, David, is sampling the great Louisiana food. I just got me a plate of jambalaya, and I'll tell you, it is delicious. And when you talk jambalaya in this part of Louisiana, you're talking about this man they call Shake. Shake, what is in this jambalaya? Caught a bunch of flack because they drafted me onto the L.A. Sprockets, and I was literally, here they draft this, this second division kid that really doesn't know what he's doing and they put him on the LA Sprockets. I mean, what did you think being like a D2 rider and all of a sudden being thrown into the Rockets, uh, Sprockets, excuse me, the Sprockets with like Mike Bast and Bruce the Fox Penhall and then there's this little second division team. <laughs> Yeah, it was, you know, I thought, yeah, I mean, you better learn to stand on the gas because you're with some fast guys here. You know, these are guys that I watched, uh, you know, obviously I watched Mike, my brother battled it out and all these guys. Now they've thrown me right in the mix with these guys. And fortunately, we used to have a lot of practice. We had a lot of practice sessions at Irwindale. And with the with the help of, of Mike Bast, I mean, I rode many, many laps right next to Mike Bast. And, and he's the one that got me up to speed. And, you know, I mean, it was kind of neat. My brother helped me out in the very, very beginning. And then, uh, you know, I had Mike helping me and And the rest of the team. It was uh, it was a pretty cool experience. You rode with Mike as a teammate. Like you were paired up with Mike. I I noticed a lot. Is that true? You, you and Mike were kind of like teaming. He was probably winning all the races, and you're probably second or third. No, actually, with it, the whole point was to get a 5-1. So, you know, I somehow adopted, adapted to riding the outside. And Mike, you know, loved to ride the pole. Um, so our deal was, was I'd ride the outside and he'd run the pole. And if I wasn't fast enough, he'd slow him down. And, and you know, it, it paid the same whether he won or I won. So it didn't make any difference. And, and believe me, he, he made sure that I, was, I stayed right up there next to him. Wow. Did, did you have any experiences with Bruce Penhall since he was on that? Did he help you? Or? Well, Bruce and I went to high school together. So, I mean, I've known Bruce since the very beginning. Oh. And how Bruce got into Speedway was his father, Leroy, actually sponsored my brother, Rick. That's how it all, that's how they got involved. You and Bruce were like old friends since like high school. Yeah, we, we've awesome. known each other a long, long time. That's for sure. Uh, he, he did. Uh, he probably has the most determination of any racer that I've ever seen. Wow.
when you race Bruce Penhall, you have to give it everything you have, and you're lucky if you could beat that guy because he is so good. And when when you race Bruce Penhall, I think you're exhausted when you finish racing him because he's so hard to beat. Well, you know, during every dog has their day, and during his day, he was definitely the guy to beat. Uh, no doubt. He was like, I don't know, he was like a first year writer or whatever. He's like second year writer. And he was like number two in points. I think Bass had like 13 point average in that league. And Penhall had like 11. And that was only like a second year of Speedway or something. And I'm like, how did a second year writer get all this to number two in points in like one year or so? So it was amazing. Yeah, he was. Wow. So. Um, so how did you get your sponsors? You had, um, well, going back to the or the Sprockets, um, you guys got second place in that uh, sort of league. It was called the National Speedway League or something. The I guess the Bakersfield Bandits won that league, and they had Doug Farrell, and then they had, like, Steve Nutter. You guys had like the stars. I mean, they had you and then Wood and Penhall, and you guys got second place. I was really shocked that you didn't win that because you were my favorite team. Yeah, you know, I mean, we probably, looking back, we should have won it. It was probably, um, we had a lot of rider injuries that year. We had a lot of uh, inexperienced riders like myself. You know, I, I would do real good at Irwindale and, and San Bernardino, and the tracks were real deep, but I just wasn't. Uh, I hadn't figured out how to ride on a hard slick track yet, you know, not, not to be, not to win any races or make any points. I mean, I could get around there, but, um, you know, it was just a combination. It's, it was a team effort at that point for sure. Yeah. I was reading the Bakersfield. They won like every meet in Bakersfield. He went ahead and he did a, a write up and he, he wrote like, I'm making my back hard and slick for Doug Farrell and all these sort of pole riders and hard slick riders. And then yeah. when the teams like Irwindale come to our track, they have a hard time because we totally prepare our track for our team and they won that championship because probably because yeah. of that. Well, and, and here's a, here's smart. a little, here's a little history for you. Digger Helms hot shoe is in the hot shoe hall of fame. He was a good writer, wasn't he? Yeah, he was national national number. Jeez, that was insane. That guy, I, I, I thought he was just a promoter, and then I start seeing all these write-ups and all this stuff on his racing days. He was, a, I guess, Class C writer, and then he wrote Speedway also. Is that right? Yeah, he didn't do much Speedway. He was really known for his Class C racing and his, and his car racing. We've been cleared for takeoff. <laughs> And promoter of Bakersfield. And the promoter, and, and probably one of the nicest guys you ever met in your life. I saw him when I was a young whippersnapper, but I never really got to meet him. But, and he passed away, rest in peace. So we're going to miss him.